The U.S. Navy carrier variant of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Joint Strike Fighter has gone to sea again. The two-week deployment of two F-35Cs from the Integrated Test Force to the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower aircraft carrier tested the Joint Precision Approach and Landing System and night operations of the Generation 3 helmet-mounted display. Two of the program's test pilots share their thoughts on how the test flying is going. So DT-2, as, as the name would imply, is a continuation of our developmental test program. Last year we went out on the Nimitz and did DT-1, and during that phase of testing we were able to carve out an initial, what we call, operating envelope. You can do all the testing that you want shore-based, but there's just certain things about the boat that you can't simulate on shore. In particular, the airflow around the boat, the burble, you can't simulate that. We have to know with 100% confidence how the aircraft is going to perform both in the burble as well as being shot off the front end of the boat. So we did a lot of that work during DT-1 and we were able to provide a limited operating envelope for the fleet. What we're doing during DT-2 is we're going to take a look at some high wind approaches behind the boat. We're going to load some internal ordnance to move our CG forward to take a look at catapult performance as well as take a look at some afterburner catapult shots and some crosswind performance. One of the biggest things that makes the F-35 so nice to land aboard the aircraft carrier are the flight controls. We have integrated direct lift control, so uh, what that means is we move the control surfaces a lot more, and by doing so we take a lot of the workload away from the pilot and therefore put it on the jet and are able to land a lot more consistently aboard the aircraft carrier with it. One of the most important innovations found in the F-35 is the helmet that the pilot wears. The helmet is a, a leap in technology from what tactical aviators have been flying with for the last 20, 30 years. If you take a look at legacy aircraft, F-16, F-14, F-18, they all have a HUD or a heads-up display, a piece of glass that sits in front of the pilot and displays critical flight information, airspeed, altitude, attitude, as well as weapon status, targeting information. So the pilot garners a lot of information off this heads-up display. And it's very important, especially for a tactical aviator, if you take a step back, back in Vietnam, it wasn't the, the threat that you saw that got the pilots killed, it was the threat they didn't see. So aircraft designers have tried very hard to let the pilot keep his head out of the cockpit as much as possible to scan the area around him. So with the HUD, it's a very defined space where the information is provided. With the helmet-mounted display, or the HMD, the pilot now has the ability to look all around and still have critical flight information, targeting information, information about threats. And it's all displayed on the helmet. It's all integrated. So no matter where the pilot is looking, he or she has that piece of information available to them. The F-35 Joint Program Office aims to achieve initial operating capability of the carrier versions by late 2018 in order to replace legacy F-A-18C and D Hornets that have been in service since the 1980s.